Hello humans. Today I want to talk to you guys about one of my new knives. This is a Victorinox camping that I just got and I'm very very interested in showing you guys its features, giving you guys my first impressions, and comparing it to my two other Victorinoxes. So let's get right into this. Victorinox has been around since 1884 when a man named Carl Elsner opened up a culinary cutlery shop. Cutlery by the way means knives. I don't want to stab this. Um, God, I hope I'm not stabbing anything important. Anyway, um, and he was a knife maker. In 1891, he got his first military contract supplying soldiers' knives for the Swiss Army. From there, he went on to develop a Swiss officer and sports knife, which was eventually called the Swiss Army Knife in 1897. So... The Swiss Army knife in its origins is, ooh, I just about cut it, and that's not great. Um, the Swiss Army knife in its origins, as you can see there, comes from the fact that the Swiss Army, the Army of Switzerland, wanted a knife that their soldiers could carry with ease. Man, this is very annoying packaging, I'm not going to lie to you. It's like stuck in there. Uh, they wanted a tool that their soldiers could carry with a lot of ease in a multitude of, of situations that was also easy to maintain and fairly simple. So the big thing with the Swiss Army is that Switzerland, famous for the Swiss Alps, is an absolute pain in the ass to try and travel through, right? As I'm sure anybody who can think about this knows... The Swiss Alps suck to travel through, even the Swiss villages and stuff. And at the time, Switzerland was a fairly poor country. So they didn't have the money required to, you know, give their soldiers lots of motor vehicles, lots of this, that, and the other thing. And so they focused on making their kit light enough to be comfortably carried for days on end by the soldier. And of that sort of development and thought process, you got early versions of the Swiss Army Knife. Um, none of these are actually all that close to it, but it came with a bottle opener, differently designed from this one, but still a bottle opener in order to open up wine or any type of drink ration. Also good for untying knots. It came with an awl. Let's see if this one here has an awl. It does for sewing in order to keep your kit up to uh, snuff. And also as a survival tool, this is a very, oh, it's covered in oil. Um, this is a very, very good tool for reaming out the inside of branches. It's got sharp edge right there. So whilst you can use it as a sewing awl, if you want to be doing leather work with it, it's also just a generally good survival tool to have. It had a knife blade for all of your knife blade needs as a soldier. Like this was not designed to be a combat knife. This was designed to be a tool, right? And a small knife is very, very useful in a soldier's kit, whether it be camp making or just general repair, so on and so forth. It came with a farrier's blade for keeping uh, hoofs in good shape, which was also extremely important. Along with a couple other odds and ends that I do not recall off the top of my head. So this original model propelled the Victorian Ox into being the official producers of the Swiss Army Knife. And they kept doing it for a very long time. In fact, they still are the Swiss Army Knife Company, quite famously. So, here's my camping. It's in the red cellulite, which is a material that Victorinox owns the rights to. It's basically just their own type of plastic. Here's a dull red version of it. It comes with the non-super scales. As you can see, it just has the two, the great little um, toothpick. And these are actually really great, the uh, pliers. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. These are some of the best multi-tool pliers you're ever going to see in your life. I have a Leatherman Micro that I carry around. And it technically, actually, it's in my pocket. Let me just grab this real quick. Mm -hmm. Shuffling around, trying to get it out of my pocket. There we are. So this also technically has pliers and they work they're fine i've used them for like splinter removal and stuff these guys are just so much nicer to use they're much more delicate they're just 
easily, easily, in my opinion, the best pliers or tweezers that you're going to get. So let me take a look at all of the features here. Like all, or like almost all Victorian oxes, it has its large blade, as you can see. Mm -hmm. Swiss made stainless, Officer Swiss. And on the smaller pen blade, you see it's like covered in oil still, which is good. No markings on this one. There is the marking camping on the side of the blade, which is nice, or on the side of the scale, I should say, which is nice. Wow, look at how clean the inside is, but uh, there's definitely some oil in there that I can see, which is good. I mean, it's been sitting in that stupid plastic packaging since, actually, I should talk about the packaging. Sidetrack, we're going to talk about the packaging real quick. When I first saw this, I was super excited. It looks like it's just got a piece of plastic sandwich between some cardboard, nice and easy. It's not. It's a full thing of plastic with cardboard sandwiched around it. It's a waste of cardboard and plastic, and it's as unpleasant to get into as some of the old, like, fuck. I was excited. I genuinely thought that this was going to be a good material to be trying to deal with and to be trying to get into. It's not. Fuck that stuff. This made me unreasonably angry because it was so much more of a pain than it should have been. Anyway, now that that's aside, you've got your large pen blade and your small pen blade. Again, they're both useful. Um, I personally like to keep them sharpened to different grits, so I can use the smaller blade for stuff like... Um, I use it quite a bit when I'm cutting baler's twine, uh, when I'm helping out my parents on the farm or my grandparents with trucking and stuff like that, Baylor's twine is a pain sometimes, so having a higher or a lower grit edge is really good, a toothier edge is really, really good for that. Next in line, we're going to have, where's the, wait, don't tell me I have to keep stuff open to get to my, I might have to, that's a little bit annoying, there's the saw, oh no, that's how you're supposed to open it, okay, so the saw doesn't have a, um, Nail nick, n nail niche, notch in it. <whistles> Just snaps in. Look at this. Look at this. Ready? Goes. It goes. It snap. That I like. It's got like. That's actually something I'm gonna say about all the Victorian oxes. They are really, really good. They like being. They don't have a half stop, which I'm not the biggest fan in the world of, but they like being in the open position. Like you can break them, obviously, but. It takes a lot of force. Anyway, um, this is probably the best saw you're going to get on a multi-tool. I know some other companies have them. It's like, just look at that. It's a bit thin, which is good. Like, this is not something that's going to be going up against, you know, cutting down a massive tree. This is like, if I were to be making scales, for example, like if on this knife right here, if I were to be making these scales, something like this where I can just do rough cuts through lots of wood very quickly. Super, super useful. I actually really, really do like that. Uh, I'm liking the saw. This is a really comfortable saw. It's nice to use. It's got a very crisp spine for fire starting. It's got this little end piece right there that's untoothed. So you know when you're at the end of your stroke. That That's French kiss. This is a nice saw. Oh, that action. I'm falling in love with this action. All right, can opener. I mean, it's good. It's sharp. It does the job extremely well. It comes with a Phillips on the top. It's actually a bit of a thin Phillips. Let me double check. I feel like my other one, oh, maybe not. Maybe they're about the same thickness. But uh, it's really, really thin Phillips, but it works. It's got a pretty good half stop, which is really useful when you need to like get that extra torque in the twisting which is obviously a very common action. This has, oh my God, look at that. You can see my fingerprints in that oil. Ugh. Again, it, it helps it rust. It helps prevent any type of, well, it's stainless, it can't rust. I don't know why they have it. Anyway, now this guy right here is a proper pry bar and flathead screw. This is gonna like, it's got a hard half stop. I think you probably heard that, but I'm gonna show it again. Like that's locked in there good for twisting good for a little bit of sideways prying you can straighten it out to full if you need some good pry action there it's a bottle opener for uh bottle cap bottles and it's got that wire stripper right there so what you do 
Oh, wow. Look at that. Like, that's good in there. Anyway, um, what you do is you take, like, a different one of your blades, you cut around the wire, and then use your wire stripper to pull it out. All right. You've got your little carabiner attacher or whatever that's supposed to be. You've got your awl, which I think I showed off a second ago. This, this tool is actually a little bit tough to get to. Like, the awl is not a very, very comfortable tool to get to in this knife, but that's okay. Um... Yeah, it's got a nice, sharp, crisp edge, so if you're doing, like, woodworking, if you're reaming out, reaming out holes, it's really good. If you're doing some sewing work on thicker leather, it's really good. It's so oily. I don't know why this knife is so oily. I'm going to be perfectly honest. Like, it's all over the place on it, and I don't know why. But, um, good all. I like this all. Zack in the Wild has an epic video on why you want an all. Yeah, bottle opener. Er... <laughs> corkscrew opener twist 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 and pull it's good um in my experience like if you've got knots and stuff like that especially shoelace knots you can get in there and pop them out really nice yeah like all things considered this is a really good knife it's got the same size oh no this is one of the big guys so it's got the um what is that 97 millimeter scales yeah, it's a little bit bigger than this one here. It's nice. It's a bit big, in my opinion, for everyday carry. Like, it's, don't get me wrong, it's not, like, a massive hulking object. It's, like, where's my uh, buck 110? Right here. Like, it's not that much less convenient to carry than a buck 110. It's almost the same width, too. But, like, for a small multi-tool, this is a bit much, in my opinion. But at the same time, it's going to disappear down your pocket, and it will not be a pain. So, yeah, these are just sort of some of my rough initial thoughts on it. I'm liking it. I should probably do an edge test since I'm here. Find some paper. Has it already been cut to smithereens? Yes. Do we care? Not really. All right. Here we go. Let's see what this is like. Oh yeah, so the big blade's got a good edge on it. I mean, I'm cutting paper right like this isn't uh, the ultimate end-all be-all test of anything. Oh yeah, the small blade actually comes, like it feels toothier out of the box. But it's definitely not dull, like... I'm just doing straight cuts. It's got no complaints whatsoever. Look at that. Yeah, so they're definitely sharp out of the box. They're nice out of the box. I don't really have any complaints. Um, my one real complaint about Swiss Army knives in general is that there's no good one-handed opening technique. Like, most of the time with multi-tools, you can like get in there and do a one-hand opening. Maybe with my left hand with my longer thumbnail, I'll have a chance. But I'm not going to bet on it. Yeah. No, like, this is just not very nice. And some people have modified them to do so. Um, this guy right here, it's an older model, Victoria Knox, that I'm thinking about starting to mod, get some scales, so I might end up putting a one-hand opener into this. I haven't quite decided yet, but uh, it is still within my realm of possibility. Cut a notch out and just... But we will see. For now... Can't really open them with one hand. Otherwise, great knives. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, this is a knife set out to do what a knife does. It's got entry-level blade steels. It's got entry-level tools. It's a tool that you can use and feel comfortable using. This cost me 68 Canadian dollars. Right? That's like, what, 50 American? And I'm getting... They call it 13 functions, but I think they technically count the carabiner holder thingamadoodle as one of them. Let's see. Um, it does. So, large blade, small blade, corkscrew, can opener, small screwdriver, cap lifter, with the big screwdriver, wire stripper, reamer, punch, key ring. Yeah, so they count the key ring as one. Tweezers, toothpick, and the wood saw. So, I mean, really, it's got 12 uses, but the versatility of those 12 uses is insane. Like, 
even just processing campfire wood. If I was going out ultralight backpacking, which is not my cup of tea whatsoever, but in the name of theory, I am doing this tomorrow, I'd be comfortable processing a lot of the camp wood that I'd be using with something as small as this. Like, this is a really dumb thing that means literally nothing, but like, just hacking through stuff. Do I have anything I can cut? I don't even have any wood. Whatever. Yeah. So phenomenal, phenomenal little wood saw. Yeah, just generally a great little knife. I think that the only modification, or the only thing I'm going to add to this is I'm going to get one of the fire ants and I'm going to thread that into my corkscrew. But um, I like this. This is a good knife. That's pretty much all I have to say, guys. Stay safe and have fun out there, everyone. Peace.